to our friends online, our family online. Uh, there certainly is a, an expectation of faith in this house this morning, and I hope it is in yours too. Because wherever the name of Jesus is lifted up, it says He will draw men unto Him. And when we come to Him, we have everything we need. We have healing for our days. We have vision for our future. We have connection. We have community. We have everything we need. In Jesus' name, I want to read the scripture that we're going to be hanging in. This series, Goats. I hope you're excited. It starts in John chapter 1. It says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh, thank you, Jesus, and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of Him. And cried out saying that this is he whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me for he was before me. And of his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace, upon grace, upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. Listen to this. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of his father has declared him to us. It's all about Jesus. So Jesus, I pray that you would make yourself seen and known in this time, in this series, in this church, in this moment. Jesus, that you would show up in new ways in our hearts and homes everywhere. God, that whether we've just started this journey of faith, whether we've been doing it for a while, God, whether we feel like this has been a long season or we can't wait for it, God, whatever it looks like, God, I just pray that you would show up in a new way, show yourself to your people. For in you there is light. And that light is the life of man. Light up human hearts, God. Restore souls. Bring peace and clarity to minds. Healing to bodies. We pray for friends, God. Friends that are in hospital, friends fighting for their lives. We declare the name of Jesus over their hospital beds and over their bodies, the healer. May you touch them, may your love find them in those moments, God, skilled hands. Pray for healing and restoration and miracles, God. Because miracles happen when you move. Healing is in this room. We declare that in Jesus' name. Everybody said, hey, if you're online, can I get a big amen? Let us know that you're excited for the Word of God. I'll tell you a little story about my boy. When I pray at night time, um, every night I try and pray for my kids. Uh, it's not always profound. It's often just a simple declaration over their lives. And my little boy, Joel, who's three years old, uh, kind of before I finished praying most nights, if truth be told, he, he would scream out, amen, like, like in the middle of it all. I'm not sure if he's hoping that I'll end my prayer or if, uh, or if he's just excited about what I'm declaring. I'm gonna go with option B. But he will often declare, amen. And the one day I felt myself kind of like not sure what to do with it. And, and I looked him in the eyes. I said, my boy, and all I could think of was, may your amen always be the loudest. Church, online family, in-house, wherever you are, may our amen to the things and promises of God always be the loudest. Even when we don't have strength, even when we're not sure we can see what God is doing, may we, Tyrone, may we declare with bold and sincere faith that we believe in a God who comes through for His people. His promises are yes and, say it with me, amen. The series is called Goats. I hope you're excited about it, greatest of all time. I'm not sure who that would be for you. I heard some of our team speaking about it pre-service. Uh, pretty awesome hearing the different approaches to it. My wife's approach to goat was uh, Queen Elizabeth. She'd call her a goat. I'd say that's pretty high up there. Uh, she mentioned Walt Disney. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I forget who else she said. But um, Dubsy then had a chance and he was like, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo, Tom Brady. And so I don't, know, um, I don't know when I say those words, goat, who comes to mind, but for sure, hands down, Jim Bob, hands down, the greatest of all time is Jesus Christ. Like winner every time, regardless of what you line up against him, he's the goat, he's the greatest of all time. And we wanna preach about that. We're gonna um, spend some time this series, the story of Jesus in the book of John. The book of John's an amazing book. I love it because it speaks about John, kind of John speaks about Jesus as a son of God. You see, each of the four gospels was written with a different approach. 
they're biographies of the person of Jesus, if you like. And uh, they've been written with a different approach. Matthew, uh, the first of the four gospels, writes about Jesus as king. That's why it starts out with the bloodline of Abraham. It's, it's declaring royalty from the first line. Jesus is king. Matthew's slant on Jesus was that he was king. Mark's slant on Jesus is that he was servant. Uh, the picture we get of the story of Mark is an ox, a servant God. That would, a God would come down to us. It's interesting, in Mark's gospel, there is no genealogy because a servant doesn't need a pedigree. He just gets straight to work. And so Mark portrays Jesus as a servant that he would come and serve us, church. I hope you know Jesus is still serving His bride. He loves His bride. He's still serving us. I hope you get what you need today. Luke was the story of Jesus as a man. He wrote about Jesus. The genealogy began right back in Adam because he wanted to show that Jesus was of a human bloodline. There was, there was likeness to us in Him. And then John writes about Jesus as the Son of God. And when it starts, John says, in the beginning was the word he was establishing for us right at the beginning of his story of Jesus, that Jesus was the Son of God in the beginning was the word. And so we're gonna spend some time together in these next few weeks talking about Jesus and what he means to us. And my goal is to really just help you see him in new ways. Like my goal is whether you've been doing church for a long time or it's your first time out, I wanna bring the Old Testament and New Testament together. Uh, we're gonna trust that God would illuminate himself to you because when you see Jesus, you see life. Like, I just got to say that. Not when, you, not when you do what you think you should do. Well, that's the overflow. But when you see Jesus for who He is, that's where the life is at. And I think we're living in a time where everyone's trying to get it right because we're not sure what's next. I wanna tell you, don't worry about getting it right. Just focus your gaze in the right direction. Get it on Jesus. And that will change everything. Uh, um, I was recently watching a story uh, a children's movie, Scooby-Doo. Shout out to the parents that are back there. Like shout out to the parents that have done a full circle back at Scooby-Doo 2021. Anyway, uh, I was watching this program and, uh, and, and Shaggy was driving and, uh, and the family's in the car with him and they're fighting. And they just, they just not, it's just, it's just not a good road trip. All of us can identify with it kids are fighting and uh, Shaggy stops and he turns to, I don't know if it's his wife or hard work, so I forget now, friends. And he says, I know why they're fighting. And like the whole car goes quiet and says, because they haven't eaten lunch. <laughs> Profound. And as, as he said that, my kids start laughing. Ah, ha, ha, they all need a hamburger. And my spirit leaps because I realize that's just like us. Most of the time that we're frustrated, most of the time that we can't kind of get along with another day and passionately serve God in the way that He's called us to serve Him, it's not because there's something wrong with us, and it definitely isn't because there's something wrong with others. It's because we're hungry. And I feel like God in the series, amen, is gonna feed some hungry souls. We just didn't have any lunch. God, I can't do another day of business. Well, why don't you just snack on a bit of Jesus today? God, I can't do another day of this marriage thing. Maybe you just need to see Jesus in a new way. You see the story. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna freewheel a little bit because I want you to pick up what you need. In the story of Jesus, he was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is Bethlehem, which means house of bread. But if you go and look at that word lechem, it means both feed and fight in Hebrew, which is to suggest that the house of bread is a place of feeding and fighting. Can I say it like this? If you haven't heard me say it before, when we feed on Him, He fights for us like manna in the desert. And I really hope that this series is a moment for you to feed on Him, not to try and fight for Him or to fight for yourself, but to, to feed on Him, to feed on Him and let Him fight for your business. Let Him fight for your marriage. Let Him fight for your family. And if they're church leaders watching, let Him fight for your church loves this church. Title of my message is simply, Feed on His Fullness. Write that in the comments tab, Feed on His Fullness. Hey, if you're honest right now, why don't you also just write out there, I'm hungry, because God knows I am. I was just reading over John 1 before I came into church this morning, again and again and again, I felt like I was just having a meal after a meal after a meal. I'm hungry, I'm 
hungry. That's why Psalm 23 says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What's he saying? If you would just feed on me, I will fight for you. Enemies ain't gonna disappear. They're not gonna listen to your rant and rave, but the presence of God will change how you approach things. Presence of God will give you a different composure. Presence of God will give you a different com confidence. Presence of God will help you see things the way he sees things. Feed on him as he fights for you. Seeing Jesus through the book of John. John chapter one says the word became flesh. I wanna give you a few ideas today. In fact, just two big ones. The first inspired by Pastor Joseph Prince, a message I heard some time back actually, a few years ago. This is, the, this is the kind of idea I want you to write down. He came out to bring us in. He came out to bring us in. I'm gonna give you a picture of the Old Testament because what you gotta understand is John is drawing a picture between the Old Testament tabernacle and the presence of God in the New Testament or the new story covenant of grace. He's trying to show us how the law approached God one way but under grace we see it differently. And so John gives us a picture right up front and I wanna show this to you. I want you to see how things have changed because of Jesus and hopefully that will give you greater confidence to approach Him in your day. He starts out by saying, in the beginning was the Word. Now, if you look at the Old Testament tabernacle, if we can put it on the screen for just a moment, it's a really cool picture of how it used to go down. By the way, this was a picture of how God's people would encounter Him, all right? And so they would start out at the bronze altar or the altar of burnt offerings out in the outer courts, and they would offer a sacrifice. They would always enter in from the east, all right? The east was a place where the ashes were, which means when the sun rises in the east, this is a freebie. The first thing you see is the finished work of Christ. Every time the sun rises, the first thing we remember is the finished work of Christ. Amen. Tomorrow when the sun rises, what you remember? The finished work of Christ. You need add nothing to what is he, already, he has already done. And from the bronze altar, we would then walk to the laver. We would wash our hands and the priests would then move into the inner courts. In the inner courts, there were a few things going down. I'll draw attention to them over the next few weeks. Stick around, it's gonna be an awesome series. But then in the Holy of Holies was the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant in Solomon's time was referred to either as the Oracle or the Dura. I think I got that right. Dura means word, which is to suggest that in the presence of God was the Word of God in the tabernacle. In fact, in the Ark, were the scrolls of the commandments, we're told. Therefore, the Word of God, the fulfillment of this was Jesus, but it rests in the presence of God or the ark. By the way, the ark was a picture of God's presence here on earth. And I wanna show you how Jesus changes the approach. Jesus begins at the presence of God. You see, it says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God, which is to suggest that Jesus is with God. The ark is a picture of heaven on earth, by the way. It's a picture of heaven and earth. Jesus was with God, the Word. And then it says, now we're gonna go backwards, all right? We're gonna start in the beginning. And the Word was with God. By the way, where did we start? East. We're not in the, in, in the presence of God yet. I just wanna give you a picture today, all right? Where does Jesus start? In the presence of God, He came out to bring us in. The Word begins the veil was what only the priests, the high priest, could walk through to encounter Jesus. Listen to this, it says, and the Word became flesh. The veil is a picture of His flesh. How do you know that, Dill? No problem, great question. Let me help you, Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which, we consec which He consecrated for us through the veil which is His flesh. The flesh in the Old Testament tabernacle under law is a picture of Jesus in the New Testament. And so Jesus begins with God, His flesh was given to come out to us. I hope you pick this up as we go through it together. I wanna show you how He came out to bring us in. The book of John is an amazing book because it turns at chapter 12. Until chapter 12 is a picture of Jesus coming out toward us and chapter 12 there's a turning around and Jesus fulfilling everything as He brings us back toward God. The Bible is not a boring story. It's not just a Sunday narrative. It's a picture of a God that came out to bring us in. To bring us into what, Dill? To bring us into His fullness, to bring us into an inheritance, to bring us into healing and wholeness, to bring us into freedom and forgiveness, to bring us into the presence of God. And so as we see the Word coming out through the veil, which is the flesh, and we see the labor, which is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Do you know in the tabernacle, 
can't wait. We're going to do a series later this year called House, and it's going to bless you. But in the tabernacle, the laver is the only thing of the whole picture that doesn't get given dimensions because it represents the Holy Spirit, which is without form. <laughs> Everything else, dimensions. This high, this wide, this much gold, this much everything. But the laver, no dimensions. Holy Spirit, without form. Woo! And so Jesus walks, carrying the presence of God. The altar is a picture of the cross. You see, in the Old Testament, they were walking through the system to access the presence of God. In the New Testament, Jesus overrides the system to access us. The altar was a picture of the cross of Christ, north, south, east, west, the cross of Jesus. It's where burnt offerings were made so that the priests could be accepted by the burnt offerings and walk into the presence of God. It's the same as where Jesus gave his life up for us on the cross so that we could be accepted into the presence of God. He came out to bring us in. You see, all this is doing is just feeding your soul. I need another tactic, Dill. No, you need a good snack. You need some food. I need another strategy. Strategies, strategies will come from overflow. I believe that. When you feed on Him, He fights for us. And so there is fullness in the cross. And I love it how it says, and from His fullness, we receive grace upon grace upon grace. Let me show you this in a different image. Check this out. I asked our team to put something together for you so that you could see. You see, John says that, the great, that law came through Moses, tabernacle, but grace and truth through Jesus, all right? Here we go. In the tabernacle story, the ark is at the center and Jesus has to move from it to find us. In the New Testament, we access Jesus and we have presence. We have access to all His presence. He came out to bring us in. That'll preach. That'll preach. I could go home right now, Tyrone. Because if people would understand, if people would just get this into their spirits, that it's not what we do for God, it's receiving what He did for us. Therein lies the freedom and the flow and the favor and the forgiveness that God knows we all need. Therein lies the food for our souls. He came out. The story of the gospel of John is of a God who came out from a place that very few could go in. Did I mention that? The high priest. He came out for all of us. For the person that's just arrived online and is checking if Link is the real deal. For the person that's been doing church for 30 years and isn't sure if God is gonna come through for them. For you and for I. For the person that was a drunk and is discovering the freedom of God in their lives. For the person that was addicted to drugs. I'm gonna keep going until you realize God came out for all of you to bring you in for all of Him or to all of Him. I love the gospel. I love the gospel. Feed on His fullness. And I'll be honest, so many times we're standing out there wondering what to do to get in. Today I'm just praying that God would give you the grace to take a step toward Him. It's been paid for. It's been set up. It's been lined up. He came out to bring us in. I'm gonna tell you a whole lot more about the tabernacle over the next few weeks. It's gonna really bless you, stick around. There's so much I wanna say, but for the sake of today, let's just keep it simple. He came out to bring you in. What does it look like for you to just accept that Jesus made a way into the presence of God today? Second thing I wanna share with you as I talk about feed on His fullness is that He fills the gaps. This whole week, this whole week, I haven't been able to shake that phrase, I'll be honest. Every single time I open my Bible, every single time I close my eyes, as I'm standing here in worship, all I'm thinking is full of gaps, full of gaps, full of gaps. God has been speaking to us, church, that He's wanting to fill the gaps. I speak of it as a food filling, but I'm telling you, God is gonna fill the gaps of your life in profound ways today. He fills the gaps. One of the things we see in the story of John chapter one, we haven't even moved past chapter one, is that He fills the gaps. And as I, as I, as I speak, I also just wanna take a moment to give a shout out to Jethro and Nat. I don't know why God just put this in my heart right now. He wants to say that he's gonna fill the gaps. I know you're leaving us to pursue a journey in the UK, I believe it is. We're gonna miss you guys. You've been amazing contributors to life of this church. I'm gonna miss you on the kit, Jethro, that's for sure. And that's on our kids will miss you in years to come. 
But we just want to pray God's grace over your lives as you go where you go, as, as God calls you to new ground. Just know He's going to fill the gaps. He's going to take care of wherever you feel it's not organized. He's going to take care of wherever you feel it isn't kind of lined up. He's going to fill the gaps for you. And I'm praying God's blessing over your lives. We love you guys big time. He fills the gap. It's been stirring in me because in church you often hear these words, He bridges the gap. And that's true. But I believe God wants to tell you today, He fills the gap. Because bridges the gap kind of is the starting point, right? Because He makes way where there's no way. But fills the gap is different. He is what we need. He's, just not, he's not just access to where we wanna be one day. He's what we need for today, amen? He fills every gap. Listen to this in John, I think it's verse 16, it says, and of His fullness. That word fullness is um, crammed up completeness. You know when... Um, you know when you make popcorn for your kids and there's too much? You know when you make popcorn and it's on the stove and it starts popping and you're like enforcing it because it's coming up hard? That's fullness. There is so much, no pressure you put on it will contain it. There is no opinion toward Jesus. There is no pandemic. There is no uh, circumstance in life that can contain the overflow goodness of God. There is a fullness to Him. There is an overflow in Him. There is an excess in Him. Lift the lid. That'll preach. And of His fullness, listen to this, we have received, we all have received. Put yourself in that block. We all have received grace upon grace. Grace is a word, charis. It's where we get the word today, charisma. It means cheer or cheerful. So out of the overflow of Jesus, we have received cheer. Let me ask you a question. Wherever you're joining us from, if you're in home, this is awesome because you don't have to look around. No one has to look at you. You just get to have this moment with Jesus. Where have you lost your cheer? Where has the joy gone? Where has what was once a burning flame become a simmering, simmering flame? Where has the passion to pursue dreams faded? Where has the, the joy of seeing her when you arrive home gone? Or him when he looks you in the eyes, lights up your soul. Where have you lost your cheer? Perhaps it's between parents and children. Perhaps it's between friendships, business relationships. I don't know. Where have you lost your cheer? Where has the fire grown dim? Because John is starting out his story by telling us, it's not for us to figure out how to get to him and make it all right. He came out to us to bring us into him. And in him, there is fullness and excess and overflow of cheer for us which is to suggest that if I just respond by saying, Jesus, I'm welcoming you into every part of my life, God. I'm welcoming you into my marriage, into my family, into my, into my social life, into my business, into my dreams. I'm welcoming you in to my plans. And when you come in, there's fullness to fill the gap. God wants to fill the gaps. You see, what the devil does is he creates a void. The devil can't destroy, but he can distract. He doesn't have the power to destroy. That's why it says he prowls like a lion. He's not the lion. There's only one lion of Judah. And so devil prowls around and distracts us. And as he distracts us toward things that frustrate us and call us to spaces he hasn't called us to, so the void begins to grow. Because when we don't walk in his ways, we don't experience his will. What's his will? Fullness and freedom and joy in Christ. And so when we're distracted, there is a lack in our hearts. And Jesus said, when we come back to him, there is a fullness that comes upon us and we receive grace upon grace upon grace. If you're online, can I get a good amen? Come on, shout to me somebody that's in the room today. Amen. Like how he says that he's the light in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it because uh, sometimes, remember hell and brimstone preaching of old, the light is here to expose your sins that you can receive. Nah, I don't believe that. We already know what our sin is. The light is here to showcase the sun. He's here to show us himself. 
I like how He came out to bring us in. He comes out, He calls us, He shines a light on humanity. He is the light that leads the way. And as we pursue the light, I hope this is getting into your spirit. As we pursue the light from that flows a fullness and a freedom and a wholeness. Grace upon grace. Tyron, I do not know what you're playing on those keys right now, but they are blessing me. That's light right there. And I believe the church is walking into a season, may I just prophesy this, of new light and new life. Because the world has grown incredibly dark. News gets worse and worse. Statistics kind of run wild. Nothing seems to be guaranteed for the future, but I tell you something, my God who came out to bring me in is the same God that burned in the bush. It's the same God that led His people through the wilderness. It's the same God that led us to the cross of, of Calvary for our salvation. It's the same God. He's working in us. The light is shining bright. He came out to bring us in feet on His fullness today. What do you need, God, to fill the gap in today? Where do you need God to fill your gaps? I would love it if, you, if you're in the room, the team that are with us, just to stand. And if you're at home and you feel comfortable, just to stand with me too. Starvation is not a good strategy for anything in life. And before I walked in here today, I glanced at the the sea of empty chairs because our church isn't open and we're excited for when it does but I glanced at the sea of empty chairs and all I could think was there are a whole lot of hearts out there empty too these chairs are not what God wants to fill it's the heart that He wants to fill and so if you're with us online right now I believe God wants to fill your heart love it if you could just posture yourself whatever that looks like Worship team, you can join me. We're gonna sing the cornerstone again. But Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll come fill the gaps. Fill the gaps in our marriages. Fill the gaps in our relationships. Fill the gaps in our sin-distracted lives. Fill the gaps in our businesses, God. What do we do next? Jesus, I thank you that there is so much of you that none of us need go home hungry today. Fill broken hearts. Fill desperate souls. Fill cloudy minds with your presence and your peace and your charis with joy cheer. Bring back your cheer to your people, God. Bring back your cheer to your people, God. And I thank you, Jesus, that as we take a little journey through the book of John, I thank you that all we'll see is Jesus. I thank you that no part of it would be left unseen in the series. I thank you, Jesus, that you'd reveal yourself to us in new and exciting and treasured ways. Thank you for your church. I thank you that she shines bright because she holds the light of Christ in her hearts. I thank you that as we go into our workplaces and our places of influence, Jesus, that there would be a light that shines so bright that darkness would not overcome it. I thank you for a confidence that swells up as we feed on you, God, and as we know you fight for us. I thank you, Jesus, that you are building your church. And so we feed on your fullness. Jesus' mighty name.